once New Zealand's very first master chef in the past six years have seen him undergo a massive life transformation from the classroom to the kitchen, from Christchurch to Auckland, TV and foodie appearances around the country. And now he's on to his third cookbook. It is so good to have you here. Please welcome everybody, Brett McGregor. Yeah. Hey Brett, it's so nice to have you in the studio with us. Do you ever look back on your life and think, Wow, if I hadn't entered MasterChef, what would I be doing right now? I think about that all the time. And in fact, I signed a book this morning um, for a really uh, important person throughout that whole journey, Cindy. Uh, from, she used to work for Imagination TV, and she kind of coached me through um, the first part or the beginning of the whole journey. And I'm always really thankful to those guys and to obviously the guys who made the show um, for doing what they did. Yes, yeah. I got off the couch, um, but you need a platform for that to happen. And, you know, when you do what you love, you won't work a day in your life. That's right. Nicely said. You're so right. Um, and you have been very successful. The past six years have been very busy. But what have you been up to, let's say, in the past five months? Five months? Uh, I've had four or five trips up into Asia. Um, just I just returned from Thailand last week on Wednesday. Um, so I've been doing a lot of learning, meeting a lot of fantastic chefs, whether they be world-renowned or just local, off the beaten track. So I'm learning dishes that are obviously uh, really high quality, but also uh, dishes that uh, have a four or five hundred year old history. So lots of learning. And, and I heard too that you did a trip with the Thai ambassador. Can you tell me more about that and what was the purpose? Um, yes, I did. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work with Thai tourism, like as a brand ambassador, and. How did you get that junker? <laughs> yeah, I think after How 18 did we trips. Get that junker? I love that. <laughs> after 18 trips up there, I think they either they was either going to go one or two ways. They were going to stop me from coming in or embrace <laughs> or me. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, they've embraced. Uh, I think my philosophy of Thailand and what Thailand is, and obviously uh, this year is the anniversary of the 60, it's the 60th anniversary of our relationship together. So I went up there to learn a little bit about how rice is a gift from God uh, to in Thai culture. It's not mm -hmm. a commodity as such. Um, and then went off the beaten track up into the River Kwai and um, saw a link between uh, the Thai, um, I think the Thai population of the area, but also how our Anzac soldiers and, and a few guys who had lost their lives up there oh, building yeah. the uh, railway. So Beautiful. It's actually a fascinating Amazing. area, isn't it, that Kanchanaburi, the bridge over the River Kwai. Do you remember that movie? Yes, that old I time do, movie? Yeah. It's a really, they, a lot of people died making this this, this couple of hundred thousand this you know. railway the death railway they call it don't yeah. they you should make a tv show about it oh, I'd we love should to. make a tv show yeah, about let's it. do it because <laughs> hellfire pass you know you don't realize that in 20 months these pow's australia dutch uh british and of course kiwi uh, American, uh, built 512 kilometres worth of uh, railway in 20 months. A lot of it through rock and all sorts of things. Oh, cool. Um, enough about that, though. Yeah. Flavours, the Asian flavours, they're your jam, aren't they? You love the Asian flavours. Yes. Um, you know, throughout the show, I suppose, in the beginning of my career, that was the love for me. I always loved that style of food. But what I've realised about it is that we're all a little time starved these days. So um, in order to ensure we're getting something that's packed full of flavour and really quick and easy, um, I've gone back to what I love, and that's, um, you know, Asian-inspired food. It's a bit of fusion with great Kiwi ingredients. Simple and delicious. Do we do Thai well in this country? Hmm. <laughs> yes and no. Right, OK. So, um, and I know that's a funny way to answer a question. Yeah, nah, it's a funny thing <laughs> Very Kiwi, yeah. Um, but, you know, if you just want everyday Thai food, then, yes, we have our pad thais and our green curries and our, our food, Thai food that is really familiar to us. But in reality, there is a whole another level of Thai food or Southeast Asian food that mm. isn't really being explored here for the Kiwi palate. Mm. And we are adventurous people. Yes. We want authenticity. And so in order to really get a true taste of a culture, mm -hmm. you need to get off the beaten track and you need to try these dishes. Yeah, so that's do. what I've tried to bring in for Chop Excellent. Chop. Excellent. Okay, then just quickly then, name me one ingredient that we must have in our kitchens if we want to make ourselves some good, some good Asian cuisine. Okay, just the one. Okay, just the one. How hard? <laughs> it's pretty hard. Uh, lime juice. Um, I would fish say sauce. I was going to say lime juice or fish sauce, but of course, you know, if you don't like fish sauce or if you're vegetarian, then you can just use soy. So there's, you know, I think they all need to be brought in together because obviously, with all of those ingredients across the board, you create balance and harmony. And you know what, yin and yang, it's all, uh, it's, it needs to be there. So it's important that once you start to build your pantry, you keep it totally Ooh, didn't nice. answer totally yeah, didn't didn't the question though, but I do understand where you come from. Great book though, Brett. Hey, Great book. Thank you is. very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brett. It is a pleasure having you in the studio with us. I'm looking forward to trying the food later on. Brett's new book, Chop Chop, is available now.